Good morning. Good morning. Quack, quack. It's a nasty day, but we're here. Praise the Lord. Um, elders, we have a session meeting tomorrow. There's um, Super Bowl tonight, in case anybody hadn't heard. <laughs> so, big day of the year for an awful lot of folks including me. As far as I know, I've never missed watching one. And this is number 56. So, <laughs> so, anybody else have any announcements this morning? I have a personal question for people. My son, Jacob, is about So, this is the day that the Lord has made. We, we will rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. And Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Father, for this opportunity to be in your house today, despite the inconvenience of the rain, we can come in safety and freedom, and we're so thankful for that. Lord, guide our hearts today with the message that you have for each of us. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Before we do our responsive call to worship this morning, if there are any of you that are living under a rock and hasn't seen our, our front page of the Cleveland Banner, there it is, and we've got, I've got a copy up here you can look at it uh, if you don't have one of your own. Uh, it was a wonderful article that our local paper did for the church and for the windows, mm -hmm. and it has been a, a tremendous blessing uh, and is and continues to be a tremendous blessing. And did you notice the new addition of our light behind the cross? Yes. Now, isn't that nice? Yes. Uh, so we are so grateful, Ted, for your talents and, uh, and uh, Ross for your dedication and being there to help lift those windows and do that for him. Uh, so we're just we're just celebrating all that. So it may be dreary outside, but it's sunshine in our souls today, and in this uh, lovely church together. Let us be called to worship. Come near to the one in whom we can trust. God will never disappoint. 
God has provided for us day by day and preserves us in the midst of life's troubles and our God is ever more ready to listen than we are to pray. Let us bring our whole selves to this time of prayer, opening our hearts to God in honest acknowledgement of our shortcomings and frustrations. Dwell together in the security God offers and never trouble your heart about the world's standards. We stand before the majesty of God and wait patiently for the Spirit's leading. Open yourselves that God may equip you in love to forgive and to rid you of your troubling concerns. We seek to respond to the God who loves us by loving others as we wish to be loved. Let us worship this wonderful Lord now in song. This morning, our hymn of praise, if you'll notice, page number two in your hymnals, Come, thy fount of every blessing, and truly, we do have a fount of blessings outside. <laughs> have a fount of waters outside. And then here we also have a fount of blessings. This song in particular was requested by someone in our congregation. And what, he wants to let everybody know that uh, Anita, her birthday is this coming Thursday. And Tommy, her beloved, requested this song because this is one of her favorite hymns. Come thy fount of every blessing. Thank you, Lord. Blessings and happy birthday, Anita. <laughs> Amen. You know, I grew up with the old version about here I raised my Ebenezer. Y'all remember that? But they finally quit singing it because nobody knew what an Ebenezer was. <laughs> an Ebenezer is a stone of remembrance. Let us, uh, let us go to confession now. Our God is ever more ready to listen than we are to pray. Let us bring our whole selves to this time of prayer, opening our hearts to God in honest acknowledgement of our shortcomings. Would you join me in our prayer of confession? 
O oh God, we are no better than our ancestors in the faith who tried to justify themselves through their good words. We compare ourselves with obvious sinners and congratulate ourselves on our virtues. We exaggerate our own faithfulness while discounting the kind deeds of others. By what we do and what we neglect, we fail to live as your children. We pray, O oh God, for your pardon. Amen. Hear the good word of our Lord. My friends, know that God hears our prayers, which we say together, and which we have lifted in the silence of this sanctuary of safety and love. Lent offers us a chance to begin again, knowing that God knows us through and through and loves us still in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us celebrate our forgiveness now by singing the Gloria Patri. Please stand for the Gloria Patri and remain standing for the Apostles' Creed. Let us share together in our confession of faith. It is found item number 716 toward the back of your hymnals. Church, what do we believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into Hades. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Well, we've got an epidemic running in the family this week. We got a bug. Carol's one of six that's had the bug or still has it this week so far. Uh, pray for me. I'm one of three that hasn't gotten it yet. <laughs> I say yet because I'd say there's probably a good chance. But anyway, pray for Carol if she will. She's uh, uh, been, been pretty badly under the weather here for the last two or three days. Got over last week's and now started all over again. So, um, also the Wheeler family. Pastor, you want to give us an update on the Wheeler family? Oh, sure. Uh, sure. Jacob had the surgery. He actually had two surgeries this past week. And uh, both were installing stents uh, because he had had a heart attack. But shortly before he had his heart attack, 
Uh, Becca had informed uh, Deborah and Ricky that she had been diagnosed with cancer. And uh, so uh, there were two siblings, brother and sister, Ricky and uh, Deborah's uh, children, that were dealing in a crisis in their lives. Uh, Jacob has successfully had the uh, implants made, and I do not yet know if he has come on from the hospital, Harry. I don't have an update on that. But the other thing is that uh, Becca will have a PET scan. That's an positive, positive emissions, whatever. Uh, my brother over here can help me with that. Positron. Okay. Well, it's a, yeah, I, I was wondering why she's going to have her pets again. I mean, you know, just uh, but anyway, uh, and that will let her know if there's been any kind of spread of the the cancer. Uh, and so we are all praying that there has been no spread, and that uh, she will be healed and be able to have the surgery and and be uh, back home. Uh, uh, well, if she's not in the hospital yet, but, you know, if she does have to be, that uh, that all this will be taken care of in God's good time. Uh, any other comments other than what I've shared about Deborah and, and Becca? I mean, about Becca and, and Jacob? Okay, I think that's about all I know here. Okay, uh, thank you, Pastor, for that. <coughs> other, other concerns? God is good. And now the next step, we will take this one step at a time. We pray for a rental house <clears throat> where the four dogs will have a backyard where they can run. So they will not have to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and take the dogs mm. and walk up and down the road. Good old pets and the effects they have on our, on our lives. <laughs> so, other. Uh, yes, Harry. Um, I had requested prayer for a friend of ours, the, the Van family, Fred's wife, Debbie. She was in a coma for quite a while, um, and she passed last Sunday morning. Uh, um, so please keep them in prayer. Yeah. Uh, Fred and his family, his two sons and their families. Okay. Uh, and thank you so much for, uh -huh. for all your prayers. Yeah. Fred, Van, and the family for the loss there. Bill? Ron Rayburn, Ron Rayburn. So be praying for Ron that uh, um, that there may be some, so a little bit of sunshine in this situation with his with his cancer and with his kidney issues. So other things. Another another issue with with uh, folks dealing with tragedy there. I, I don't know whether you've been following it or not, but the uh, death count from the earthquakes in Turkey and Syria is 28,000. 28,000 there. So um, just pray for 
all those families that have suffered loss, all the destruction that's, that's uh, occurred and the rebuilding that will have to take place over years to come. So. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Fortunately, they they have found a lot of been able to rescue a lot of the folks out of the rubble. Um, they were still alive. So, others, Pastor. Thank you, Harry. <clears throat> Let us go to the Lord now with these uh, thoughts on our hearts. Father, we thank you so much that uh, no matter how dark the uh, day may come that you are the light of the world and that you live in our hearts and we're so grateful for that we know that these that we pray for many of them know you personally as we do and they they are blessed even in their adversity and you will grant to them your gifts of grace and peace and i pray healing mercy and I pray, Father, for those that are grieving, like our brother Fred, that, Father, you would truly assure his heart with the complete knowledge that he has not lost Debbie, because you never lose something when you know where it is. And you also never lose something if you're going to see it again. And some glorious day, Fred will be reunited with this one he loves so dearly. Lord, I thank you that we can have confidence that no matter how much adversity comes into our lives, that you have given us the promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us, and that your right hand will uphold us, that you will be our shield and our defender and our rock. And so that gives our heart such great comfort. We also know that you were wounded for our transgressions, you were bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon you, and by your stripes we are healed. And so we claim those many blessings and promises now in faith, as we pray with all confidence the prayer that you, our Master, have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Give, and it will be given to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into our lap. For the measure we give will be the measure we get back. Rejoice in this opportunity to share the goodness of God, for we are so blessed. We're blessed to have uh, Brenda again with us today to share a message and song. And we're always delighted to have her with us. We are so fortunate because we have a wondrous God who blesses us with so many blessings every day. Now, he's blessing us right now with the rain outside. But he also truly blesses us in our soul. Like the woman at the well I was seeking for things that would not satisfy 
fight. But then I heard my Savior speaking, draw from my well that never shall run dry. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift things this world gave you. Leave hungers that won't pass away. My blessed Lord will come and save you. If you stand for the doxology. may be seated. I invite your attention to God's Word as it is recorded for us in the writing of Moses in uh, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, we'll begin reading with the 11th verse. For this commandment, which I command you this day, it is not hidden from you, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh you, in your mouth and in your heart, that you may do it. Uh, see, I have a King James Version, and I had to translate it all real quickly in my head. Uh, or we'd have had a thou sayest and everything else. So. See, I have set before you this day life and good, death and evil. And that I command you this day to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that you may live and multiply 
And the Lord your God shall bless you in the land where you are going to possess it. But if your heart turn away so that you will not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that you shall surely perish and that you shall not prolong your days in the land where you are passing now over Jordan to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both you and your seed may live, that you may love the Lord your God and that you may obey his voice and that you may cleave unto him for he is your life and the length of your days that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The setting for our reading this morning is Moses' valedictory address to Israel. Moses' life uh, can be divided into three segments primarily. The first 40 years of his life in Egypt waiting to be the king or the next pharaoh possibly. The second, 40 in the wilderness, watching sheep. And the third, leading Israel. And that was a handful in and of itself. It was kind of like, I don't know, have y'all ever seen that Lucy car, uh, comic? Uh, uh, I'm talking about I Love Lucy. Uh, when she decides to raise chickens, and she has all those baby chicks and tries to round them all up. That was one of the funniest, one of the, their funniest episodes. It's kind of like trying to herd up squirrels, you know. But Moses loved Israel, his people, and he tried to lead them into Canaan, to the promised land. That's what it was called because God had promised that land to Abraham and his descendants. And so we now see Moses giving a last speech to Israel to let them know that there is set before them uh, some choices. Now for you that may be taking notes on takeaways, what we see here is first, they have a choice to make. And secondly, their choice will determine whether they live or whether they die. You know, a, a choice and the power to choose is an amazing power. Victor Frankl alluded to that when he talked about his experience in the concentration camp at Auschwitz. Victor Frankl is a famous psychotherapist of that day. Uh, he died in 1997, I think. Uh, but uh, he, was, he was born in 1905, so he lived a, a good long life. But Viktor Frankl in Auschwitz was experiencing a different kind of life. He was lying in the mud, having just received the butt of the rifle of the Nazi guard. Frankl said, I knew in a moment that I could respond and die, and it would be all over with. But he said, he, they had taken away everything I had, but the one thing that no one could ever take away. Do you know what that was, boys and girls? The freedom to choose. The freedom to make a choice. He said, that guard was doing everything he could to provoke me 
to despise him and hate him and rise up and then he would have an excuse to kill him. And he said, as I lay there, I said, you can't make me hate you. In other words, I have a choice. So the power to choose is an amazing ability, isn't it? And, and Moses is telling the people, don't blame God. You have a choice. Yes, God does foreordain and God does predestine, but he also has created this wonderful, magnificent gift to humanity, and it is called free will and the power to choose. And Moses is speaking about that when he gives this orator, oration rather, to the children of Israel. So let's go through it, if we could, like a homily, verse by verse by verse. Look at verse 11. He says, I'm going to call this the path of prosperity. First, we see the revelation of the path. It is not hidden from you. For this commandment, which I command you this day, is not hidden from you. Neither is it far off. So it is not hidden from you so that you can say, I have to look for it. Nor is it distant from you that, I have, that you have to even reach for it. In fact, the word he uses in the Hebrew is the word, it's in your face. It is right before your face. And then he goes on to say, it is not in heaven that you should say, who shall go for us up to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. Well, we're waiting for somebody to, to go up to heaven and bring it back to us. And he said, no, no, it's not there. Now, you have to understand the Jewish concept of heaven. They had three concepts of existence. One was what was called Eretz, or on the earth. The other was above the earth, called Shemayim, and that was the heavens. And that was where God and the angels dwelled. And then underneath the earth was Sheol, and that was where the dead existed. They were no longer dead, I mean, no longer alive upon the earth, but they were alive in a different state, which we don't have time to explore. But the idea of Shemayim was that a great distance, as the person would look up at night and see the stars or the moon or the sun, they could imagine, what would it be like? I can't even jump six inches to a foot off the ground. How would I ever get up to heaven? And so when uh, Moses said this, he said, this commandment is not in heaven, so that someone will have to go up there to bring it to us. And he goes on and he says, neither, in verse 13, is it beyond the sea. Uh, this was one of those, uh, in looking out at the earth, one could only imagine the farthest reaches of, of the earth would be the sea. And I'm sure there had been those uh, seamen that had gone out into the sea and had reached the point to where they could no longer see land. And maybe they went for days more. We don't know how far people may have traveled. We know that they crossed uh, the Mediterranean. But beyond the sea, beyond the great ocean out there, the Atlantic or the Pacific, it is neither in heaven nor is it beyond the sea, but the word is close to you and me. How close is it? This word is in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it. Now think about that for just a moment. Moses is telling the children of Israel, that God has not made this difficult for you. 
He has put his very law in your heart and in your mouth. And he says to us as believers in Christ in Romans 10, 9 through 10, that if we believe in our heart, that God has raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. But it says, if first you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. The heart and the mouth. Is that something we all can operate? Some of us operate it well too, too well, I guess, at times. But God has put this power within our hearts and within our minds. The Word. Psalm 119 reminds us, verse 11, Thy Word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against Thee. And in Matthew 4, 4, Jesus said, in resisting the temptations of the devil, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So we've looked at the revelation of this choice that is right in our face, that is right in front of us. It is the choice of life or death. That seems like a pretty easy choice, doesn't it? Well, then why did Eve, when she had everything in the garden, all the splendor of paradise, why did she just have to have that fruit? Even knowing that the risk would be death. You know, I, I, I love the way the uh, Hebrew language is so melodic. It has a lot of, I guess they call that onomatopoeia, where a word sounds like that word, like buzz and screech and boing. Well, the Hebrew for their word life is kai. Kai. Death, mauve. Good, tov. Evil, ra. Isn't that, I like that descriptiveness. Of, that's the way the Hebrew language, I'm not just making up these words. This is the, the way they put these words together. So that they literally have meaning just in their sound. So, do you want to choose good, Tov, or do you want to choose evil? <laughs> that is kind of what Joshua said, choose you this day whom you will serve, but me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. So it begins with the decision, the power to choose to obey the commands I am giving you. And what is that command? Moses spells it out. Follow me now into verse 15 and 16. See, I've set before you this day life, chai, and good, tov, and death, mave, and evil, wrath. And that I command you this day to love the Lord your God. Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? He said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is likened to it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You know, when it comes to following the commands of God, when it comes to walking with the Lord in fellowship, it all begins with love, doesn't it? You know, researchers have studied who really does well in life. The person who has a high IQ or the person who has a high PQ. 
IQ is intelligence quotient. PQ is passion quotient. And it is the passion, it is what we love that drives us. And this is why when Peter had denied his Lord, Jesus said to him, Peter, not do you get me? Now do you agree with me, Peter? No, he said, Peter, do you love me? Because if you love me, I have some work for you to do. I want you to feed my sheep. I want you to care for my lambs. I want you to care for my sheep. So Moses is saying to the people, you have a choice to make. It's right in front of you. It's right before your face. Are you going to choose life or are you going to choose death? Are you going to choose good or are you going to choose evil? And so I command you, Moses said, I'm giving you this command to love the Lord. Just like Deuteronomy 6, 5 says that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. And with all your heart, that means with all your feeling, with all your emotion, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your might, all your strength. And then to walk in his ways. In other words, to conduct one's life in agreement with the Lord. And then added to this, Moses said, uh, but if in your heart you decide to turn away, then all this good, all this blessing that God has promised for you, has prepared for you, then you will not receive it. Because if you do not receive what God is offering you, you're going to have to experience that curse of not believing. You know, some people picture God up in heaven going, oh, you did that, I'm going to get you. You know. I picture more God saying, I'm holding out blessing to you. Choose the blessing. Choose the good. You know, in the Hebrew language in the Old Testament, the word life appears three times the amount that the word death appears. That sounds to me like God is saying, why will you die, O Israel? I want you to live. Choose life. And so in verse 16, uh, in that I command you this day to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments, his mitzvah and his statutes and his judgment. So the word statutes there means ordinances, customs, rituals. And the word judgments means decisions, rulings. Those are all separate things. And if we walk with the Lord, we're going to encounter these, aren't we? We're going to see all of these different things. And when I look at the world today, I see a world that's trying to rewrite God's Word. They're trying to cut out this little portion because they don't like it and cut out that little portion because they don't like it. Revise this because they don't like it. So we've looked at the revelation of the path to prosperity and we've looked at the uh, recommendation of the path to prosperity and uh, that Moses is saying choose life now let's look at the remonstration to those who reject the path the rejection of the good and life and prosperity verse 17 that's called a free will but if your heart turns away so that you will not hear but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, then you will not be able, he said, to hear if your heart turns away from God. 
Now, I'm not one of these people that's going to stand up here in the pulpit and try to scare you to death and say that you're going to lose your salvation because I don't believe that. I believe that when you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and what He did for you on the cross of Calvary, you're going to live forever. Now, you may mess up in your journey and you may experience some real terrible things in your life and you may have to suffer God's discipline in so many different ways. But I don't believe you ever strike your name out of the book of life. Because that would mean that what Jesus did on the cross was not greater than all our sin. Do we believe that His grace is greater than all our sin? Can I get an amen? Can I get a witness? Amen. So here, if you reject, you will not be able to hear. You won't be able to hear the voice of God. You won't be able to feel that sense of guidance of the Spirit. And you will be drawn away, and you will worship other gods, and you will also serve them. Now that was his special word to Israel. What is really sad about this is that if you go back and read the first few verses before what I have read to you, you will find that God has already told Moses, Moses, your people are going to go into the land and uh, they're going to prosper for a while, but then they're going to fall short and they're going to go after other gods and I'm going to have to judge them and I'm going to have to scatter them. So Moses already knows the answer to his admonition when he gives it. And so he says, but if you reject the blessing, then all that will be left to you is the curse. Moses then said, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. I'm literally telling the Israelites, Moses said, that a record is being kept in heaven and earth. And this record will state very plainly today that I have set before you, let's kind of beat a dead horse here, life and blessing, death and evil. What will you choose? Well, I don't know, Alex. What's behind door number three? You know, uh, door number one, long life. Door number two, long life and prosperity. And door number three, a winning lottery ticket or death. Which one do you choose? Oh, winning lottery ticket, huh? I will choose door number three. Well, I'm sorry. We have nothing but death behind door number three. I think I told you that to start with. But, uh, uh, no, no, we don't have any best two out of three, double or nothing. You made your choice. This is what Moses is saying to Israel. Don't blame God. God has set before you life and blessing and prosperity. And I believe he says that to us even as His church. I have set before you life and blessing and prosperity. When we have Holy Communion together, He sets before us life and blessing and prosperity. But if we refuse to see Christ's body and blood, if we just go through it as a routine, then we miss out on the blessing. And if we miss out on the blessing, then it looks like, well, we're receiving a curse. No, you're just not receiving the blessing. So, I have told you to choose life, Moses said. You will live and prosper if you choose life. And your children will also. I'm telling you also to love God, the Lord your God, I'm telling you to obey His voice and you'll be able to have a wonderful reward of being able to cleave to Him for He is life. What did Jesus say He was? I am the way, the truth, 
and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He is the length of your days. He will allow you to claim your inheritance, to live in the land, and to possess the land, to occupy it, and to own it. Well, what would Moses say to us today? This and we're done. The same thing, except I believe he would add, the word, the way, the truth, and the life has come down to us from heaven. Jesus said, I am the bread that has come down from heaven. John said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He would say, the tree of life is restored to all who will come to the cross and feast on its fruit. If you come to Jesus, you will have chosen life, not just for a brief time on earth, but an eternity in heaven. Sounds to me like the best deal. So how do we do that, preacher? I'm going to do this and we're done. You speak to God in prayer. He hears you when you pray. Lord, I know I'm a sinner, and I know I could never be good enough to go to heaven. That is the gospel truth. Thank you for sending your son down from heaven to die on the cross for me, and then raising him from the dead to live forever in me through his Holy Spirit. I invite you now, Jesus, to come and live in my heart. Thank you for forgiving me of all my sins by your death on the cross. Lord, I don't know how you did it, but I'm humbly now in faith surrendering my life to you. I choose life over anything the world could offer me. I receive you now into my heart by faith, and I will live for you, and I will serve you the rest of my life. If you prayed that prayer, I promise you on the authority of God's holy word that Christ came to live inside your heart. And you chose wisely. You chose life. God chose for you life by sending his son, Jesus Christ. That is called grace. And you chose life. That is called faith. So that when we choose this life, what do we need to do? Now that you have chosen life, if you were baptized as a child or as a baby, then you need to confirm that baptism. And you need to say, I'm going to follow Christ obediently now as his disciple and become active in a local church. If you were not baptized, as a child or a baby, then you need to request believer's baptism and you need to follow Christ obediently through this means as well. You now need to find a loving church. I know of one if you happen to be in the Cleveland area that is a very loving church who is opening its arms wide to you. So why do you need a local church? Because everybody needs three homes. You need an earthly home, you need a heavenly home, and you need a church home. Where brothers and sisters in Christ can lift you up together, where you can learn how to love God by reading God's word, where you can learn how to walk with him through prayer, praise, and worship, where you can learn his commandments to us and learn uh, in how we can share together in his sacraments with us and learning his judgments and rulings and learning how to follow the Holy Spirit's leadership in your life. Choose life. Kai.
not Malve. Choose good, Tov, and not Ra. Let's stand together. Let's sing our hymn of decision and dedication. Now we know that the Father knows what we've chosen already. Our closing hymn is indeed a prayer, another prayer to sing to God today. Cleanse Me is the name of it. On, you'll find that on page 438 in your hymnal. And the first line is, Search me, O God, and know my heart today. Dare we? Dare we really ask that prayer? Yes, we do. Please, let's pray together. Cleanse me. And it's sung to the tune of a waltz, okay?
kidding. <laughs> I was trying to get Angela to speed it up. She would not let me speed it up, whatever I did. You know, so. uh, let's, let's go to the Lord now in prayer. Father, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for the joy that we have in you. Thank you for the, the tears that we can share together when we need to weep together. And thank you for the laughter that we can have when we need to just laugh with each other. And, and I, I just thank you, Lord, for that. I pray that you will truly send us out into this world that needs so desperately to know the power of your life and goodness, that needs to know the power of the cross and the message of salvation. And truly, Lord, let us not be ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Send us out now in your name, most holy Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And God be with you till we meet again. Mm -hmm.